Did you notice the difference in systemic steroids dosages in asthma and COPD? Check out the previous video to look at that. In this video, we'll discuss why the dosages are different. In patients with asthma, the airways are normal and when they have an acute exacerbation, they are edematous and inflamed and when you treat it appropriately, it goes back to the normal self without any residual inflammation or edema. In case of COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the airways at the start with are inflamed and damaged. There is some permanent obstruction element to it. And when there is an acute exacerbation, there is an acute edema and inflammation on top of existing edema or inflammation. When you treat COPD, it goes back to the baseline, which is with the residual damage, but it does not go back to the normal self. It's important to know this difference between asthma and COPD because the steroids, which we are targeting, in asthma, it is to reverse it to the normal self. In COPD, it is to reverse it back to the baseline. There's also a trial called REDUCE trial in COPD patients, which showed that there is no benefit in giving these patients the asthma equivalent dose of prednisolone. This caused more side effects in, in these patients rather than benefit. So it is important to stick to a lower dose, which is 30 mg of prednisolone for the short duration of five days. It's an interesting point to understand that patients with COPD are more likely to be elderly patients and they are more prone to steroid related side effects, even though it is for a short duration. Side effects such as hyperglycemia and confusion are more possible in these patients rather than asthma patients. A clinical tip before we end. In case of acute exacerbation of COPD due to infection, that is infective exacerbation of COPD, do you still give them prednisolone? Do you still give them steroids? Yes, we do. It does sound a bit of counterintuitive because we understand that the steroids have an immunosuppressive property. And then when we're treating an infection, we're giving them antibiotics to target the infection. So when you suppress the immunity, it could mean that you're increasing the risk of infection. But it is important to remember that the steroids we're giving is only for five days. In case of steroids to show their immunosuppressive property, they should be for a longer duration. That is, for example, for at least two weeks or more. So when we give patients steroids for acute exacerbation, we are targeting the anti-inflammatory properties of steroids, but not the immunosuppressive properties because it's for shorter duration. So you can safely give infective exacerbation of COPD patients both antibiotics to target the infection and steroids to target the inflammation. I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.